Hello everyone! Uh, welcome back to Spiritual Essence. I know this time I'm not using my tripod. Um, it's much easier that way. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to teach you how to summon a deity. And the best way to show you is by showing you an altar of one that I've done before. Um, so let's take a look at that. Alright, so what do we have here? So, we have the goddess Rhiannon. She is a Welsh goddess of sovereignty, politics. Um, her name means uh, White Witch, or I believe High Queen. So she is royalty, and um, she's supposed to be very nice, very kind, very generous with her wealth. She has a mystical steed that can ride faster than any horse. She also has mystical songbirds that can heal um, so, if I were to make an altar to her, she has a lot of things she's associated with, so I only took what I could. So, we have a silver teapot. Silver is something she's associated with, so whether it's tarnished or not, that is fine, uh, as long as it's silver. Uh, dragons, so I've got little baby dragons here, they're so cute. Um, dogs. So I have this cute little puppy. Aw, isn't he cute? Um, these little bird, I have three of them. Three little bird, uh, trinkets. They are so cute. I bought five of them. I don't know why. Quartz crystals. You can never go wrong with quartz. Selenite, which is a lunar stone, and she's associated with the moon. So, it's always, um, now you don't want to overload an altar, especially one of this size. Look how small it is. I've done that before in the past and it disrupted the energy. So the portal that she used to enter, it was kind of stifled and I wasn't really able to feel her energy that much. So, you know, you want to space out everything, you know, really make sure everything's spaced out nice and there aren't too many things there, but as many as you can. And then I have two white candles. You can never go wrong with just a couple of regular candles. So, that is how I usually do an altar to her. I've toned it down on the items that I put on there to not stifle the energy. So, uh, yep, this is how it looks. And, how would we summon her? Well, I'll show you. Now, because of where I live, I cannot have this altar, you know, the same all the time. I have to clean it up, put it away then interchange it with another deity the next time, and so on and so forth. So, um, it's basically a makeshift altar that I switch about all the time, but it still has tons of energy left over from all of my rituals, but I always reset it with sage, just to reset the energies, and plus the quartz crystals actually do a great job of absorbing any old energy that may be, have clung to this, so that's also good. Um, so, basically you would start by, you know, lighting the candles, turning off all the lights. This is what you should do for all rituals, um, at least at night. If you're doing them during the day, that is another thing, but usually I do them at night, so I turn off all the lights. Only the candle light should be there. And then you will kindly call to her and let her know that you've set up an altar for her. And that um, you got tons of offerings for her and she uh, should come and enjoy them, you know, at her leisure. And uh, if you don't feel her energy, you know, feel free to call her again. Just don't nag. Don't be like, oh, come on, you know, where are you? Oh, you're supposed to be here by now. Don't rush it. Magic cannot be rushed. So just wait for her to come and you will feel her energy. You will feel someone else enter the room and no physical person will be there. And you'll know it's her. You'll know. And it is a wonderful feeling. She's helped me through so much. She's good for political affairs. Uh, she is great. Uh, if you have been uh, wrongly accused, she's good for justice spells. Um, she takes pity on those who have been wronged. She's also great for uh, spells that have to do with money and finances. Um, I have used her uh, for those many times, and she, also for the Justice Bell. She really did work. So, 
I am grateful to her. Um, I see. Here's the thing. Um, I could not find out what her horse's name was. Um, I couldn't find it in the legends about her. I couldn't Google it. So I tried to meditate to her and ask what the horse's name was. And the name I got was Astelius. It is not something you can Google. It's not something that I don't think will appear in the legends about her. I could be wrong because I don't know all the legends about her. But um, yeah, Astelius. So th this is how she spelt it. So if you want to call upon her and her noble steed, Astelius, there you go. Um, I don't know if there are names for the songbirds. I'm pretty sure they're just the songbirds. Um, but you have her with the altar. And she can come and enjoy the energies off of each item. The candle energy, the, uh, the crystal energy, the energy that you may have put into the sculptures, uh, the silver, and so on and so forth. And um, you don't necessarily have to have a statue because the this wasn't ex expensive, but I do like how it looks. It's really beautiful, really shows off, you know, her uh, majestic side. She is very cool. Um, as soon as I heard about her, I I knew we had a connection somewhere. Uh, I believe she's a Welsh goddess. Um, and uh, she was wrongly accused, I believe, by her own husband for uh, something she didn't commit. But she stood her ground and waited until the truth came out. And she she got justice. So she is really a trooper. She is a great queen. She is a white witch. Uh, so she can be called upon for anything with good magic. I would not call upon her for anything of a negative nature. No curses, no hexes, no. But justice spells, yes. Um, she is very strong. Very, very, very strong. Um, so, uh, that's all her, uh, her the power she, uh, wields over. Um, and you can ask her any questions while she's at the altar. All you have to do is speak them aloud, and, uh, she will communicate with you in some way, shape, or form, uh, either by telepathy or maybe in the dream that you have when you fall asleep after the ritual so uh but she will answer you usually i hear her telepathically and she has sent me prophetic dreams before and these were the dreams were which were much more real um after i've done a ritual to her she lets me know yeah she lets me know uh if i don't get an answer from her telepathically she will send me an answer through dreams um, I trust in her greatly. Um, she is definitely a perfect uh, goddess uh, to utilize. Um, when you, after you've asked all your questions, usually what I do is, you know, um, I really make sure she knows that I am appreciative of what she does for me. Out of all the prayers uh, she's answered, all of the blessings she's bestowed upon me. And I, I'm really grateful for her power. I really try to let her know my appreciation. Because it it always feels good to be appreciated for what you do. Especially if it's out of the goodness of your heart. Which is what she does. She doesn't expect anything from this. But still, I offer her the offerings. And, you know, she gladly takes them. And she offers uh, answers to questions and prayers. So, um... Yeah, she's really great goddess. Um, and then after, what I do is um, I'm like, I hereby conclude this ritual to Rhiannon. Thank you for coming. You may stay as long as you like to enjoy the offerings. And then that's it. And then I blow out the candles. Uh, sometimes I'll leave the candles going for just a little bit, but you don't want to leave them overnight. So um, just... Let them, you know, you can blow them out and then just continue on. And um, I would leave the offerings on the altar until you're ready to go to bed. That way she can take her time utilizing all the offerings and there's no rush. And then there you go. It's as simple as that. It is as, as simple as that. I know this is uh, a little bit more unique than the 
videos I usually do, I decided not to use my tripod this time and just film it as is, from my point of view. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. That's how you summon a deity. That's an, a great example of how you summon a deity, how you get them to come to an, uh, to an altar ritual, um, and, you know, just offer your prayers. Uh, even after the ritual is done, you can pray to them anywhere. You can pray to anything anywhere, you know, and they'll hear you. Easy as that. Easy as that. That's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell button so you don't miss any of my future videos. And uh, please share this video with as many people as you feel could use this information. I'm trying to help as many people as I can and educate them on the spiritual. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you later.